everybody. Thanks for tuning in to us. I'm so glad that you have stopped and took your time. You've scrolled the internet or you've actually looked us up. However you got here, I'm just glad you're here. We've got one of our services, one of our words that we have given, one of our songs uh, we've put out here, and now we're together. The reason we do this is because we feel the Lord has put messages on our hearts, words on our hearts that we can help you. But the main thing is to glorify Him. So thank you for coming by and spending a little time with us. I, I promise, uh, don't just start and stop. Sometimes you got to catch up to me. you got to catch up to uh, everything. But if you'll put the time in, I think you'll find that God's got a word for you. Now, we'll be back in just a few minutes with some other things. And, and so just sit down, hold on, and let God bless you. All the folks in here under the age of 30 to actually, I really want you to Give me your best attention this morning, and especially anybody under the age of 20. I feel the church has let you down, because the message I'm preaching to you, I remember as a kid hearing this from probably the time I was able to understand. Uh, we will be in the book of Revelation this morning. Very seldom do I ever preach out of the book of Revelation on a Sunday morning. It is a good Wednesday night study. Uh, I'm going to be preaching on the subject of 666. Now, I want you to ask yourself a question. When was the last time you heard anything on 666 preached? You see it everywhere in the world now. But when was the last time you heard a message preached on 666? And so we're going to, I need your focus and attention. This may be the most important message. If you missed the rapture, I promise you, this is the most important message that will be in your memory banks is what I'm going to preach to you. This will be where you, whether you decide to spend the eternity in heaven or in hell. And it will not be my opinion. This is what the Word of God says. So from the book of Revelation this morning, Revelation chapter number 6. I'm sorry, Revelation chapter number 13 to start with. And verse number 16. Would you stand with me for the reading of the Word? We've got four different places we're going to go to in Revelation. And I'll probably just follow the board Amen. If you got it, say amen. And he calls all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that have an understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. And the number is six hundred, three score, and six. Revelation 14, verse 9. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And it shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke and the torment ascended up forever and ever and hath no rest day nor night, nor worship the beast in his image and whosoever received the mark of his name. Revelation uh, 16, 2. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth and there fell noisome, grievous sores upon the men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them that worshipped this angel. Verse, uh, chapter 19, verse 20. 
And the beast was taken with him and the false prophet and that wrought miracles before him with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and he that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into the lake of fire which burneth with brimstone. Verse number 18 of the first reading that we had says, Here is wisdom. Let him have an understanding Count the number of the beast, for it is the number of man, which the number is 600, three score and six, which being interpreted as six, six, six. After this message, you will have no excuse. I'm giving you wisdom this morning. I, I apologize for not probably preaching this more. But when I was a child, my mother told me and my brother, whatever you do, no matter where you go, no matter what happens, whether you're bad or good or whatever, do never take this mark. I feel that this generation has been totally left down, and yet this generation has more signs that the end is near than any of the ones that came before it. Amen. I remember years ago, you may be seated. I was out in a public place and I come up on another saint of God and she was with her daughter. And we got to talking about the end of time and somehow we got into this and the daughter put her hands on the ears and said, I do not want to hear. And I thought, my, 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 by the mercies and grace of God, that daughter has come to the Lord and is living a very victorious life. But at the time, she is like so many people today. You want to come to church when it's convenient. You want all the blessings and all the prophetic words that are joyous and happy and, and, and then talking about your prosperity, but you don't want. The modern church does not want anything that's hard, anything that is, that's difficult. We want sweetness all the time. I mean, and people will leave this church if I continue to preach like this because they don't want to listen like we've been preaching over the last couple of weeks. But I'm here to see your soul saved. Amen. I'm not here to be your best friend and pal and to make you always feel like throwing backflips and, and shouting all the time. I want you to do that. You had your chance earlier. I'm here now to give you a sobering message. Now, i got to put some things in order this morning. Well, I'm, I call these the order of the apocalypse. Now, there, some of these things, listen, when it comes to talking about revelation and the apocalypse, I am not arrogant enough to tell you i got it all figured out. I'm not even close. And i I got to be honest with you. Over the years, I've changed my thought process on, on different things, especially in the book of Revelation. When I went away to Bible college, I was what you would call a mid-tribber or a post-trib person. My grandfather leaned to that uh, way of thinking. I know some good men that, are, that believe in that, and so I don't have a problem with that per se. But I am going to tell you, uh, my perspective is that the very first thing that happens in the apocalyptic calendar is the rapture of the church. Okay? Someone said, well, why do you feel that way? Because we're not appointed unto wrath, but to obtain salvation. That's the verse that opened my eyes to this. Amen. The children of, our God, the children of God, our wrath was wiped away with when we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Amen. The blood of Christ has covered me. Amen. Uh, the story of the rapture, now that would take me a whole message to get in, and I have preached on that quite a bit over the last five to ten years, uh, uh, probably about every at least once or twice a year, I preach a message on the rapture of the church. I give you the, uh, the definition. I don't have time to get into that. That's not my main message. But the first thing that takes place, for, from my viewpoint, from what we call a pre-trib viewpoint, is the rapture of the church. Now, why is that so vitally important? Because if you are saved and raptured ready, 
my message really doesn't apply to you. You won't be around for the mark of the beast. Someone did a light come on for somebody? You're, here you can study. I don't want to be here when this is happening. Amen. But there will be many that will be. There are many that are sitting in our churches across the nation that are going to miss the rapture of the church. In fact, there's more than you realize, and I say this because this is a nice crowd. It's, it's shaped, we started out small, but it's shaped up to be pretty nice here this morning. Amen. Uh, in a crowd this size, I, I, if the rapture takes place right now, I, I, odds are there would be quite a few that would be left behind. I love you, but I'm just speaking truth. Okay? As in the days of Noah is the rapture. How many, how many made it? Eight was on the boat. Out of all of humanity at that time. Do those figures. That is a type of the rapture. But if you go in the rapture, hallelujah, all that I'm going to preach to you Means nothing. But if you miss the rapture, you need to get this on recording and you need to tuck it away in your sock drawer because when the rapture of the church takes place and your mama and your daddy's gone or your aunt and uncle's gone or, or preacher Tom's gone, amen, uh, you're going to want to pull this tape out and start listening to it. Now, my personal opinion that the rapture will be the greatest lie that Satan has ever worked on humanity. I, my personal opinion, I don't know what he's going to do, how he's going to explain it. I don't know uh, how big the rapture is going to take place, but I do believe it will be the biggest lie of humanity, and there will be many that are left behind that will not realize that the rapture has taken place. The newscaster is not going to get on Fox News or CNN and say the rapture of the church took place. I can guarantee you that. They may recognize that there's something happened, but they are not going to get on there and say the rapture. Will there be some podcast or someplace, you know, like in the Left Behind series or some newsman someplace uh, uh, make an announcement? Yeah. But the Antichrist, as soon as the church is taken out, the Antichrist will come on the scene. So I said, what gives you scripture this? Because I believe what's keeping things in order right now is the church. When him who has let is taken out of the way, and some people have said the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit doesn't leave. Now he changes his work fashion. But the Holy Spirit is he is omniscience, omnipresent. He doesn't leave. But the church, the church. The bride of Christ is taken out. We Listen to me, America, Trump is not the answer. Okay? Uh, now listen, out of the two, there ain't no doubt in my mind where I'm putting my vote. Okay? But he is not the answer to uh, uh, what ails America. It's this holy Bible. It is the church preaching the truth of God. Amen. And this church has got to humble themselves and repent of their wicked ways. And then will God fall on this nation again? I heard uh, Vicky's son, uh, Tyler, was over at the rally the other day, and I saw some things on his page, and then I saw there was an, uh, another lady that I know that was at the rally. It was yesterday, Butler. I think in Butler, PA, the same place where the tragedy was uh, a few months ago. And this lady reported to me, and Tyler can testify to this, that they were singing how great they are and had a praise service and, and, and did, hey, they're going in the right direction. But they're not the answer. Politics is not the answer. The truth of the Bible is the answer. You need to understand this. But the Antichrist, his first three and a half years... It's going to be a time of peace on this earth. It's going to be a time of peace. Uh, uh, after the rapture of the church takes place, in fact, they're going to, so there will be some that will recognize that the element that the world hates right now, uh, that the... Mm, there are politicians that can't stand the church. 
I mean, they see that we are the problem. They think that, that my preaching right here is decisive. My preaching right now is detrimental to the calls that they've got going on, and they feel that we are the problem. And as soon as we are gone, they're going to release it. Then they're going to say, well, look what, look how good that we've done. Look at the good things that we've done. There's going to be three and a half years of peace. Do you got your eyes on Israel? Did you all? I wish I would have. I, I wish I would have. Brought it up for you. I can't find it now. Maybe I'll read it tonight. Somebody sent me a post. Did you all know the miracle that took place in Israel this week? That they really don't know how many missiles were sent off, but not one of them was detrimental to the country. And that people that don't know anything about nothing are recognizing that it is nothing short of a Red Sea miracle. That all them missiles were stopped before they could do harm. In fact, Iran that sent them forth and their, their supporters, whether it be China or Russia or whoever, they are completely baffled. That's God. God is protecting Israel. But there will be three and a half years of peace. And then we're going to get into this mark. I always thought, listen, is, do you, somebody asked me a question, and I'm, I'm, I'm skipping ahead to the end of my message, but somebody would ask me, do you feel that there, the ability for the mark to take place now worldwide is here? Yes, I do. I believe COVID was a dry run for the mark. Okay? Do I believe they got the technology to do this? No doubt in my mind. Similar things are happening right now. There are people that are getting chips in their body. There are people that are getting different things that are happening that you don't have to carry a pocketbook. You don't have to carry a wallet. Your whole portfolio and everything will be on this little, little disc. Okay. It's already, it already exists. So do I believe that the mark could take place right now? Yes, I do. Do I believe biblically that it will take place now? Not according to what I preach to you. But I believe we are within, possibly we are within three and a half years of the Antichrist putting this mark worldwide. You need to understand. Now, it doesn't worry me. I'm not fretting over it. I'm not losing sleep over it because I don't plan on being here. I, 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 I do not, I, I don't say, if you do that, that's because your heart is not right. I promise you, I will not lose sleep tonight. Because I also know, I, if I go down the road, and like hap what happened to me three weeks ago, and a car pulls suddenly out in front of me when I'm going at a high rate of speed, that if the worst takes place, it's all right, because I'll be with Jesus. But there's some of you in here that are literally, you don't want to hear what I'm saying. You are scared because your salvation may be good enough to live by, but it's not good enough to die by. In the mark of the beast, you need to hear this. Revelation 13 gives us, if you was to read the whole chapter, tells us there are two beast that are coming up here. We recognize what they call the unholy trinity in Revelation. When you hear the unholy trinity, it is the uh, Satan, which is the dragon. He's even named the great dragon and it even says Satan. And then there is the false prophet. And then there is the Antichrist. Now, there are all types of different ideas and I will not begin to tell you some say the, the the false prophet may be a computer it may be a system it may be this i i don't know and i don't worry about it. like i said i don't plan on being here but i do want to give enough information for some that may be left behind well, I pray that one day, you know, when I'm sitting there at the feet of Jesus, I'm sitting in heaven getting my horse ready to come back with him. 
that somebody will watch this message and say, I'm not going to take the mark of the beast, uh, the mark of the beast. That I may be helping to educate somebody. In fact, one of those movies I watched, it actually was that away. I, the, the one man, he went back and got the preacher's tapes and he listened to the preacher tape and, and he got himself right. He, was, he got himself founded. But Revelation 13, 16 gives us a warning. And that's what I read to you. It gives us a warning about the mark of the beast. He said, herein is wisdom. Let him understand and count his number. The number is 666. It is the number of man. Okay, the number of God is seven. The number, notice it's not the number of Satan. Now listen, what has happened to this number 666? And you can go back into pulp culture. You can look at things. Uh, Helter Skelter came along, Charles Manson, and, and they hijacked that number, and different satanic cults have hijacked it. That, and that's not necessarily the number of Satan. It's the number of rebellious man. It is found... Besides Revelation, in two other places in the Bible, King Solomon and in Ezra. I can't announce the name of the king, but that number 666, and it referred to the wealth of rebellious man. And the, there is a warning. Now, I, I'm just going to be honest with you. Listen, I don't think it's a voodoo number. I don't run away from the number 666. Amen. I don't drop down all of a sudden, make the mark of the crucifixion, pour holy water, and all that kind of thing. But I am going to tell you, if it was my address, I would change it. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't like that be, I would not like for that to be my identification number. Uh-huh. But it won't take significance until the Antichrist. And the false prophet begins to pour out their ultimate plan, and then that is for them to possess all of humanity. And they are going to, in this scripture here, it tells you exactly what is going to happen. You can let's let's back up here and read that again. He says. He calls us all both small, rich, great, and poor bond to receive the mark in their right hand or their forehead. Now, this is the part I want you to hear. That no man might buy or sell, save he that hath the mark or the name of the beast or the number. You can't buy nothing. Now, I guarantee you in a, in a crowd this size, there's some people that's already thought about this and you got plans and you think I'll do this and I'll do this and you've watched the movies. Hollywood has had a field day with this number. There has been countless movies and books and stuff. And, and, and you know, the, listen, there's been some correct movies and correct books on it. But for the most part, Hollywood butchers this. And they think, listen, you are not going to stand up against the devil and the Antichrist and Arnold Schwarzenegger and Rocky Rambo and, and Chuck Norris and all of them putting together, they're not going to rise up a holy army and defeat the devil's army. That is not what Revelation says. You're not going to outsmart the devil. They're going to find you. You are not going to hide under a rock. Now, listen, I tell you to do best, the best that you can, but they are going to find you. They know where you are right now. Who's that? Well, them. They're going to hear me preach this message. Probably put a mark against my name for preaching the truth. They know about Backrick Valley Church. They know about Tom Snyder. They know about um, Orr's Market. You ain't just a regular market. You're a godly market. They understand that. It's more than, well, that crazy bus driver, Mike Marple. No, they know who you are. How much more are they going to know? As technology keeps on advancing and advancing and advancing, you're not going to run. You're not going to be able to hide. You're not going to be able. I know there's some of you think that you're better, that you're going to outwit the enemy. It's not God's plan for you to outwit the enemy. In fact, God's plan is for you not to even be here at all. 
He is offering you a way of escape. He doesn't want you here. He's already made the ultimate. You don't have to fight. You don't have to do nothing. You just need to get on the first boat out. But for some reason, you wasn't ready and you are left behind. Let me tell you, you're not going to be able to buy a Twinkie. I don't care how much money you got. Well, I got my own cattle. I raise my own crops. I do this and I do that. And that's your problem right there. You are not going to be able to last sooner or later. I heard somebody say this. You may have somebody that's listening to my voice and you're agreeing with everything I'm saying. And supposedly, supposedly in that day, you have a child or a grandchild. And that grandchild is hungry because it doesn't have no milk and you ain't been able to give it no milk and you're running out of food. What are you going to do? Well, I'm going to call upon the Lord. You're not doing it now because if you did it now, you wouldn't be here. Woo. But when that child is, is it, you just take somebody like Genesis right there. I'm hungry, Pappy. My belly hurts. I'm hungry, Pappy. I'm hungry. I'm hungry, Pappy. I'm hungry. And then you get by that. Maybe you are strong willed enough to get by that, but then you start seeing her body starting to fade because the babies are going to be the first that leave this world because they can't eat. The devil will mess with your mind and say, I'm going to take the mark so I can get food for my baby. And you know what's going to happen right after that? They're going to give you the mark and you're going to get your food and they're going to take your baby and kill your baby. You can't figure it out. You're not going to be able to figure it out. Now, the Bible's real plain about what happens to those that give in to the mark. Over then the next page, the next chapter, it says, If any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead and his hand, the same shall drink the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels in the presence of the Lamb. If you don't hear nothing else, if you take the mark, you are doomed. There will be no mercy. There will be no grace. You can't buy your way out of it. If you yield to the mark, you are doomed. And not only on this earth, you are doomed for eternity. Now, why is a God that is holy and righteous going to pour out his wrath upon his own creation? I can tell you why. Because his own creation has just flipped God off and told God that they didn't need him. And the indignation is because they did, when they didn't need God, they turned to Satan and his unholy trinity for their relief and for their answers and if you do that there is no coming back so i advise you if you take the mark of the beast to do everything that you can because you're down to about three years before armageddon comes and you will be lost and you will be in a devil's hell with fire and brimstone so you might as well live it up if you take the mark of the beast. Because that's all you got. That's all you will ever have. I know this is real. Someone said, Brother Tom, why are you being so strong on this? Because I believe it's very, very close. Revelation says judgment. Revelation 14, 9, 11 says judgment comes from the God, comes from God. Those who receive will be lost for eternity. 
You can't take it by mistake. You will not be tricked into taking the mark of the beast. You will knowingly, you will not stand before God on the white throne judgment day and say, well, Lord, they tricked me. No, you will not. Now, is there trickery afoot right now? You better believe it. Are the preachers uh, preaching false things in the pulpit out of ignorance? Yes, they are. But I'm telling you, you cannot receive the mark in your forehead or your hand unknowingly. You will know. It is your choice to take, to make. You can walk away from it. My personal opinion, this is, this is just personal. I don't know if it's anything like this. But I do find it amazing that our liberal friends, they're so liberal on so many policies. You can't do this. You can't do this. You can't do this. But they are supreme supporters in capital punishment. Not just capital punishment, but beheading. Someone says, well, how, how, well, we've already seen it once in our history. If you would have lived in France during the revolution, those so-called enlightened doctors and scientists and even preachers, they had the guillotine made because they thought that it was a humane way. There, that from what I understand, there are guillotines tucked away all over the United States. I, I, no, I haven't seen it, but from what I understand, it makes sense to me because the Bible talks about beheading. And my personal opinion is they're going to call you in when you go to get that mark, and it'll be, it'll be painless, it'll be easy, it'll be one of the most easiest procedures that you ever take, it won't hurt, it, it, it'll be just, as, they'll, they'll figure a way to give you that mark, I don't know exactly how it is going to be, whether it's going to be under the skin, whether it's going to be visible, I, I don't know none of that, none of that bothers me, I just know you won't be tricked, and when you come in to get that mark, there will be some, I believe, that at the last second will say, no, they'll remember my preaching. I'm not going to take it. And right outside the door, visible for all the others to see, will be those that refuse the mark. And there will be those that will refuse the mark of the beast because they will cry out, their blood will cry out from the altar. Who are these? Okay, there will be those that will not take the mark of the beast. But I can almost tell you it won't be you. You know why I can tell you it won't be you? Because you can't live for him now. How in the world are you going to live for him? If you can't live for him now, don't tell me that all of a sudden you're going to come up with super courage and super demonstration and live for him then. Shucks, you can't come to church because of a whatever. You can't read your Bible because of whatever. Someone said, Brother Tom, that's strong. It's not near strong enough. You think that you'll be able to avoid the mark of the beast and all of a sudden if it takes place, you will be strong enough. You can't get to church. You can't pay your tithe. You can't read your Bible. You cause problems with your mouth and your division. And yet you think that if you miss the rapture of the church, that you're going to somehow supernaturally all of a sudden begin to speak in tongues and prophesy and lay hands on people. You can't even come to church. So how do you know? Because I have questioned that in my spirit. <sighs> hey Amen. If I miss the rapture of the church, wow. Wow. How in the world do I think that I am going to be able to become supernaturally strong? Well, who are these? Some of these little ones that never had the opportunity maybe to hear and when they do hear, it ain't, it ain't backsliders. It's people that never heard, 
Now, that's my opinion. I'm going to try to give you a bone of hope if you are here. Don't take the mark. Prove me wrong. If you get left behind, prove me wrong. I'll meet you on the other side. Amen. We'll sit down and we'll share a bowl of grapes. Amen. Prove me wrong. But better yet, go with me in the rapture. Amen. I ought to preach what causes me to miss the rapture. Okay. There's no mercy. No grace. Revelation 16.2 tells us that. And when the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, there fell a noisome and grievous source upon the men which had the mark of the beast. Amen. Before the, the men that have the mark of the beast... They're going to have all these pains and sores before they leave. They're going to cry. They're going to weep. They're going to say, we wish we hadn't took the bark. They're not going to be no better off. There is no mercy. There is no grace. The only way to heaven, it reverts back to a law-type religion. And you've got to obey one thing's for sure. This is the number one law that you gotta that you gotta keep. Don't take the mark. Don't take the mark. Love the Lord. And don't take the mark. I wrote down four common questions about the mark of the beast that people ask. The first one. Do you think, do I think, that the Antichrist and the false prophet is alive now? Personally, I do. I can't prove that. I believe we're that close. Do I know how old they were? I have felt my whole life that the Antichrist... Now, I know that there's an Antichrist spirit that has been around since the crucifixion. I know Nero had the Antichrist spirit. I know Antiochus Epiphanes even had the, the, the Antichrist spirit. Hitler had the Antichrist spirit. The Antichrist spirit is alive and well. But do I believe that there is a certain man? I certainly do. I believe that. Now, I don't have no way of proving that. I don't have no inside information. I haven't been on the dark web. I, I don't know anything like that. I just are looking at the signs of the time. If the rapture takes place, and I believe it can take place at any second. If the rapture takes place at any second, then the Antichrist is going to walk on the scene and then in three and a half years, he's going to be like the beast that is described that's going to rise up him and the false prophet. And they're going to come up with this solution called the mark of the beast, his mark. And everybody will have to have his mark. Some people got upset at us when, when the I knew that the COVID shot wasn't the mark of the beast. But I also am not dumb enough to know that it is not reflective because it's a personal freedom that they are trying to force me to do. I'm not here to scare you or to do any type of uh, demonstrative to try to draw you. I'm just here to tell you what I see happening, honestly, on the political scene nationally. Come on. Look at it. Look at it. And we got a politician sitting right in our, uh, our, our delegate sitting. That's running, sitting right here. Think that's coincidence? Okay. Look at this. Do I believe the Antichrist is here? I do. I don't know where, what, how. I don't even know if he knows it himself. I believe he will be a Judas-type figure. Okay, I believe he will be of some type of a backslider. That's my personal opinion. You think he'll be a Syrian? I'll let the other people worry about all that stuff. I just think he's probably on the earth someplace. Second question. Is the ability to give a worldwide mark here now? Well, what about, the, what about places like uh, uh, Nigeria, in the jungles of 
Budapest. What about, there's a remote tribe. I'm here to tell you, when COVID, when they started, it was worldwide. Every airport, every place you went, Europe, Asia, Australia, New Zealand, Alaska, Antarctica, it was not a place on this earth. So do I believe that there is a worldwide ability to give the mark? Yes. Do I think that they've got the ingenuity that they can ship it someplace and you can take it yourself? Yeah, I think it's that easy. I do believe that the ability for everybody in the world to take the mark is here now. I believe the last 120 years of technology has led us to this point. It's amazing. When I get done on Wednesday morning prayer meeting with this group, do my radio program, I go down to the house about 1 o'clock and get on a video conference, and I'm talking to India. I'm having a prayer meeting with India, Uganda, Kenya. Isn't that amazing? Don't tell me the ability for a worldwide mark isn't here. No, they, there ain't nothing they got to do. They can do it. Listen, aren't you amazed how they were able to find all them masks just like that? Believe me, if they can find masks like that and Amazon can keep their things on. They, it, it, the COVID made Amazon. It made them a billion, probably a trillion dollar business. Don't think there ain't somebody ready for the mark. I do believe that. I've already discussed this. I got ahead of myself. But can I take it by mistake? No, you cannot. You won't be tricked into it. You won't be. You can't take it by mistake. Can I prevent my loved ones from taking it? No, you cannot. It's a free will choice. You cannot stop your sons and your daughters. It will be so hard on your family because you won't be able to stop them. Amen. I wouldn't be able to stop anybody. I would cry and weep and let them know. They'll look at you laugh and then they'll turn you in. It won't be by mistake. Finally, will I go to heaven if I refuse it? Yes. Yes. The only way that you're going to have strength enough to refuse it is to call upon the name of the Lord. I do believe that if you refuse the mark of the beast... Now, from me sitting here preaching this, I would think, but we love life. Man, we are, are, are ever, there's th something inside of us that fights to live. It's called the wheel. We love life. But I would think if I'd missed the rapture and I realized what's going on, that I'd just go ahead and get through it. That's what I'd like to think. I just go ahead, give it to me now, take me out now. I mean, don't give me the mark. I, I confess I'm not going to take the mark. Here, put my head down. I don't think it'll be like that. I think they will put you in a torture chamber, and I think that they will do everything they possibly can to try to get you. They can't force you to take it. You will have to ask for it. But if you refuse it, do I believe you can go to heaven? Yes, I do. It talks about those that are martyred, that laid down their life. There is no other way to heaven. Do you know how easy it is to get to heaven now? Wherever you're at, you're listening here. I don't care what you've done, but conviction's on you. Only thing you've got to do, you don't even have to walk up to the altar. You, you don't. The only thing that you've got to do right now is to repent. Repent and be born again. That's it. And then you just start walking in it. 
That's all you got to do. There's nothing else. You don't have to perform a sacrifice. You don't have to speak in tongues. You don't have to be water baptized. Listen, being water baptized and speaking in tongues or, or whatever else, those are all good things. Paying tithe, reading your Bible, that's all good things. Amen. But all you got to do is just confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Amen. And you can make it into heaven. But it's not like that. You've got to refuse the mark. And now, my question is, if you're not living for him now, and I've already jumped into that, how do you think you're going to live with him when a bunch of camouflaged men in military vehicles? If Christian and Kelly was here today and anybody else that's in our military, I know that you take a vow that you, listen, but if those vows go against the word of God, it would be better to be put in the brig, be court-martialed, to be thrown out of the service. You can't go against God. You can't go against God. And here's the sad thing in our country. The military is only as strong as the person that's leading it. And I hesitate to say this publicly, but this next election, I dread to fear what would be the sake of our military if certain ones get the power. I don't know how to work anyway. Can you live for him now? Listen, I hardly ever think about the mark of the beast. I just see the signs of the times and know that we are getting close. I told my family the other day, I can't afford, this is my personal opinion, the rapture of the church is without spot or wrinkle. That's not my opinion, that's what the Word of God says. I don't believe that I can get mad at somebody and lose my temper, be angry and sin not, no, I was angry and I sinned. I got mad at somebody. I'm holding grudge against somebody. I've got ill feelings towards somebody. I'm not going in the rapture. I'm not going in the rapture if I've got sin, active sin in my life. That's why for the most part, when something happens, I like to fall on my knees or find me a place of prayer right away because we don't know how quick death may come or how soon the rapture may take place. I want to, by the grace and mercies of God, to live above sin because I do not want to be on this earth when the mark of the beast takes place. I do not want to miss it. Would you stand with me? I know this morning let me word it this way I didn't just give you some sweet bread and candy I gave you a very strong hard dose I know, I don't even know here, but I know I try to be obedient to the will of God when it comes to preaching. But I know that there is probably in Berkeley County, we never have, I never have figured out how many churches there is. But I doubt in Berkeley County if there's 10% of the churches this morning or this month that you'll hear a message this strong. And they will have bigger, better, but they're not going to give you this. They'll have perfect pitch praise. They'll have 
lattes and they'll have you'll be able to get whatever you want. Comfortable, small jokes. Listen, we do we do that sometimes. But every now and then you need a truth. You need a truth. And the truth is, don't ever take the mark of the beast. I myself, I wouldn't be bothered about what person sat beside me thought. I wouldn't be bothered about anything. I This has been eye-opening for some. Intended to be. I'd be talking to the Lord. Lord, I want to make sure that I'm ready for the rapture, whether I die or whether I fly. Lord, I want to make sure that there's nothing that's going to stand in the way between me and you when it comes time to leave this earth. I do not want to be left on this earth. How many weeks we got left to the election, brother? About five? Is it five weeks? Five weeks. What is it, November the 5th? November the 5th. Huh. Maybe the rapture will take place November the 4th. November the 6th. It might be, I don't know. But for me, I think I want to find a place this morning and make sure. I know I didn't give you no glossy prophetic. Ooh, you didn't get all the tinglies. But I gave you a word this morning. Don't take the mark. You'll know it. Don't take the mark. Hallelujah. Mom, come piano and play. Whatever the Lord's put on your heart. Altars are open this morning. Like I said, if you're going to pray, we've really been feeling this. You don't necessarily have to come to the altar, but I think you need to move from where you're at. I just think you'll, you'll pray a little bit better. If you'll just move from where you're at, the altar's full. We got plenty of room in the front. Amen. Let's talk to the Lord. Listen, if everything's smooth with you and God right now, maybe you've had good prayer meeting, everything you got smooth. How about start praying for them children of yours? How about start praying for the people you work with? How about start praying for that aunt, uncle, brother, sister that's on way? And you know that if the rapture took place, they wouldn't go. Let's find some prayer this morning. We'll make a way for you. Go ahead and sing, brother. Oh, yeah. I know the Lord will make a way for you. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. God, search our hearts. God, when I preach to all others and I myself become a castaway. Oh, God, I don't want to be a castaway. Lord, I don't want to lose my family, God. Oh, God, I want to be on that first boat out, God. I want to be raptured. Oh, God. God, I want to live for you now, God. I don't want nothing.
I don't know, want ill feelings, thoughts, or anything in the way, God. God, I don't want to be so stubborn. Oh, God, that I miss the rapture. Oh, God. God, I want to be out of here in the rapture. Or if you call me home before, God. Oh, God, I want to make sure, I want to make sure there's nothing in my life that stands in the way, God, of heaven. God, I want to be in heaven. I don't want to go to a devil's hell. My God. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for being with us today. We hope you've enjoyed this. And listen, the most important thing about this is if you do not know Jesus, ask him into your heart. Pray that sinner's prayer. If you need to contact me, by all means, please contact me. Uh, if you've got questions, we believe God. It don't matter where you're at in the world. We will make contact back with you. Uh, we appreciate your giving. Uh, this kind of thing does cost a little bit of money. And we're asking for help. You can help us. We've got all the information with our Tithely. You can send money through there. Uh, we appreciate your prayers and your response and for just liking us. Spread the news. Tell everybody that you know that Jesus saves and he's coming soon. Now remember, friends, this is the first day of the rest of your life. Go live it for the Lord.